Hey guys, what's up? I'm Dylan and today's video is going to be an info session that we just had um, for Stanford Theater. We have students who are very involved in the theater community in a bunch of different student organizations and also majoring in the TAPS theater and performance studies departments, majoring and minoring. Um, and so here they talk about their experience and answer some questions that people had. I also just wanted to list all the student theater organizations real quick. Um, so we have Stanford Shakespeare Company, also known as Shakes Theater Lab, Asian American Theater Project, also known as AATP, uh, Latinx in Theater, Black Stage, Rams Head Theatrical Society, also known as Rams, Stanford Light Opera Company, also known as Slowco, Stanford Drag Troupe, Flying Treehouse, which is a children's theater, and then Stanford Improvisers, also known as Simps, Robber Barons, which is a sketch comedy group, and UPS, uh, Unscripted Playhouse Improv. All right, so here's the info session. We're just gonna have representatives from each of these student groups just talk about what these groups are. Um, Caitlin, do you wanna talk about the TAPS department, theater making? Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about the TAPS department, which is actually not a student group. It is the Department of Theater and Performance Studies um, through Stanford University, so that's like, if you were to come to the school and major in theater, you would get a degree in theater and performance studies. It is kind of broken into two, and I'm sure you can find all the information you want on their website, but there's an acting concentration and a theater making concentration. Um, I definitely cannot speak to the acting concentration. I've never taken an acting class in my life. Um, but as far as theater making, there are professors in kind of all different areas. So sound design, lighting design, stage management. Um, we have a producing class that's just getting started the past two years that is like amazing. Um, like a technical theater class and more that I'm sure I'm missing, costume design, stuff like that. Um, so that kind of covers like all the academic areas. And then as far as work, you can get paid to work in the top shops. So people with interest in like costumes can get paid to work in the costume shop or in the scenic shop um, or for lighting design sometimes. And so like there's areas for employment there that are kind of like the only paid opportunities on campus to work in theater unless you get like hired for something off campus. And then as far as the shows that the department does, they do three main stage shows every year and then three second stage shows every year. Um, and the main stage ones are directed, designed by faculty, um, and the second stage ones are mostly directed and designed by students. Sometimes there's some like PhD students that do stuff in there. Um, but to be in a TAP show, there is no requirement to be a theater major. That's something I really love about it is like, no matter where you are, I know, I'm trying to look for people, like Morgan, was not a TAPS major last year when he was in Cabaret and auditioned and was in it. Um, and I would say probably about half of the people in the shows aren't theater majors, and then probably the other half are. Um, Brenauer and or Amanda and or Eve slash anybody, do you want to talk about the TAPS acting? Could I like speak really fast? Because uh, I have to like go eat dinner. <laughs> of course. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, I am part of the um, acting concentration, and basically, uh, okay, I have a lot of feelings about it. I think um, I wouldn't have picked another school that wasn't Stanford. I think I learned a lot from being here, and I, like, definitely grew as a human being and had a lot of crazy experiences, um, but right now, just to be totally honest, the department is like super lacking in like actual practice courses in terms of acting um, and also singing. Um, so there's only about two, three, four acting classes, like actual acting classes that you can take. I love the instructors. I had a great time and I love acting in the top performances um, as like the, the performances that the production, sorry, I can't speak today. The performances that the department produces are like really, really well done, really high quality, like really really rewarding to be a part of um i would think that like if you're really interested in like um shakespeare or 
like very like avant-garde, um, like downtown New York theater, like experimental theater. This is the department for you. Um, the new artistic director, Michael Rao, is this really fantastic director who is really, really interested in like very edgy um, theater. Uh, and I think like that is, you know, rightfully not everybody's cup of tea. And if you wanted to be in different kinds of productions, there's so, so many student groups on campus that you can join to do that. Um, but I would say that like, in terms of the department itself, we're really focused on, we do a lot of Shakespeare, we do a lot of Brecht, and we do a lot of like, um, very like edgy contemporary plays. So if that is what you're looking for, then that's great. Um, and then if you want to do musical theater, if you want to do opera, you want to, you know, explore your identity through theater, there are many, many other groups on campus that you can also be a part of to kind of fill that role in your life. Um, but just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go eat dinner. Bye! Have a lovely night! Um, I'm also just gonna jump in and say that that kind of goes for practice as like a designer. So if you're interested in like lighting design or sound design or costume design, there are going to be, there are some, but there are going to be fewer opportunities within the department to get like hands-on faculty mentorship while you work on a department show. Like that's not something that is frequently done, um, more so with second stages, but I don't think we've ever had a student like design a main stage show, which I think speaks to the number of student groups that are here, just because that is like, and I've done it like that is where you get hands-on practical experience with the exception of stage management. Every TAPS major has to stage manage or assistant stage manage a show. So if you are a stage manager, like this is, this is the department <laughs> for you. Um, which is one of the reasons that I'm really happy I'm in it is because that's kind of primarily what I do. So yeah, I'm, I'm also an acting concentration, um, in the acting concentration, and I definitely agree with what Amanda said when it comes to the practical offerings of the department, um, but I think that the way that I kind of went about it, like going into Stanford, was that I wanted to maximize the practical opportunities that I could have to actually act and perform and, and like get training through the department where I could. Um, so one of the ways that I've done that, and a lot of us here have done that, is through the Undergraduate Performance Project, which is coded as TAPS 122P. Um, and it is this um, course that is combined with um, doing a show. So basically, for a quarter that 122P is happening, there'll be a show. So like, I did The Tempest uh, my freshman year um, through this. And when you're it's basically a class component and a rehearsal component, and you can take it from like w one to nine units every time you do it. I don't wanna go into the nitty gritty of the unit count right now because they're kind of in flux about how many times we can take it for how many units. So that's gonna be kind of an ongoing conversation, but basically what you do when you're in it is you have a class that you attend like two to three times a week that's kind of more theory-based, more um, dramaturgy. Um, you're kind of learning about the historical context, you're approaching it from a scholarly lens, and then at night you have rehearsals for the show as you would any other show. And then there's usually a masterclass component um, on Friday afternoons in which uh, like various directors will kind of bring in specialty artists and mentors to work with you. So um, each, you know, each 122P is different. Um, I've also been in Life's a Dream, which we had a guest director for, um, and I've stage managed when they were doing um, The Seagull. So, it, each experience is different depending on the director, but I found that it was a really good way to kind of blend my like scholarly and artistic practices and also just get units for doing a show because as everyone here can probably speak to, uh, when you do student theater, you spend a whole lot of time on it, like 20, 30 hours a week on it sometimes, depending on your involvement. And uh, it can be hard on the schedule to be doing that while taking a full course load and not getting unit credit for it. So when you're in 122P, your course load is actually kind of reflecting the fact that you're spending time doing theater. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. I'm also the TAPS peer advisor for this year. So I have one quarter left of it. I'm still doing it virtually. So uh, everyone here I'm sure feels this way too, but uh, I'll definitely feel free to reach out to me and talk to me about the department. One other thing I wanna add too, um, and echoing everything that Amanda and Brenna said, um, I think if you're looking for opportunities to develop your singing, 
TAPS is starting to offer more classes, but where you're really going to find that is in the music department. Um, like Brenna and I, we both take voice lessons in the music department with Katherine Jennings, who is amazing. Um, and I know that she just got hired to be director of vocal studies, and she's really interested in bridging the gap between music and um, the TAPS department. So I would imagine that sometime while you're at Stanford that that there's going to be more connection to singing courses and how to sing healthily um, as time goes on. But it's definitely something that's like sort of at the beginning of an upward march. So, um, so Shex is um, the short form for Stanford Shakespeare Company. Um, we are a repertory theater on campus, which means that we hold auditions at the start of the year. And you're basically, um, you basically have a place in both of our productions in the year. Um, we have a separate, we have separate technical companies and acting companies. So when you're auditioning, um, you kind of choose which companies that you go into. Um, but there are a lot of people who like um, goes between the two companies. Um, I think something uh, very important about Shakes is that besides the theater aspect, we have a very strong community. Um, is because we basically know each other and work with one another for the entirety of the year. We kind of have a lot of social events. Um, we are a pretty close uh, group in terms of, um, I guess, like the social aspects. Um, besides that, we are also really invested in outreach, which is essentially like bringing Shakespeare to um, other people. Um, and so this is shown through um, the fact that all our shows are free and um, they also attract a lot of people from the greater Bay Area as well as people on campus. Um, we also hold um, outreach classes at local high schools. Um, so we would email teachers, go to the classes and teach them Shakespeare or teach them how to approach Shakespeare. Um, yeah, so I would say if you're interested in um, if you're interested in having a community within theater and really exploring your arts um, with a tight knit group of people who um, will be who will learn to work with you throughout an entire year, um, Shakes is a great group. Um, it's also really great for people who are trying to figure out what aspects of theater they're interested in. Yeah, I think that's um, it. Star and Inky, do you want to present about AATP? Yeah, um, so Asian American Theater Project, or AATP, AATP is the um, Asian Asian American Theater Org on campus. So um, our mission is mainly to uh, put on shows reflective of Asian Asian American playwrights and Asian Asian American narratives. Um, like Shakes, I think that because we are a student org, um, community is probably at the core of our values. Um, and yeah, we put on about two to three main stages every year. So there's opportunity to get involved with both the acting and production side of things. Um, and I would say that one of the nice things about the group is that unlike, um, maybe like TAPS shows, we are more accessible to people who have no skill level. I would say that probably most of the people that join our org have never done theater before. Um, so if you're looking to build your skills before you know, making a decision to become a theater major or just to try out something new, this is a really great space for you to do at a low risk. Um, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to share, Inky? Um, yeah, I think in addition to that, even though we are really accessible to people who don't um, or who haven't had a lot of experience in theater, I think we still definitely make really high quality theater. Um, uh, our group was started by David Henry Huang, who is like a famous playwright, um, and a lot of alum have gone on to work professionally in theater. Um, I know someone's name who is really recognizable to a lot of people here is Ken Savage. Um, who is a producer at American Conservatory Theater in SF. Um, so yeah, uh, we're here to welcome you into the theater community um, and also teach you a lot. Uh, and also people who don't identify as Asian or Asian American are very welcome to um, audition for our shows or 
uh, be on board or uh, work on the technical side of our shows. Um, I think our primary mission more is to center or is to explore questions of like what it means to center like people of color on stage, people who aren't usually represented on stage. Um, yeah, so everyone is welcome to join us if uh, they're willing and interested. Alan, do you want to talk about Ram's Head? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Ram's Head Theatrical Society is the oldest and largest theater organization on campus, um, primarily focusing on original student work and musicals. Um, so uh, our organization is responsible for three and a half, I'll explain the half later, three and a half shows every year. Um, the first of which being Gaiety's, which is the big original student written sort of rally comedy reflection musical um, that is about to so reflect on our rivalry with Cal, um, or is certainly founded to celebrate our rivalry with Cal um, before the big game, uh, but more recently has taken much more of a take on both a comedic, but also a uh, very reflective sort of uh, moment to explore what it means to be a Stanford student um, at any given point in time. And so to make sure that that authentic Stanford voice um, is being uh, is coming through, um, we write the, the, the music and the show and rehearse the thing from scratch every single year. Um, uh, and Chloe will tell you a bunch more about that uh, as this uh, the producer for Gaiety's uh, 2020. Um, in addition to Gaiety's, we also have uh, the Winter Show. Uh, this is actually a brand, not quite brand new, but very new offering. Uh, we'd formerly been offering um, what was called the original Winter One Acts um, for over a hundred years. Uh, and we just replaced that show format with Wish, which is intended to do hyper-creative and innovative theater. This past year for our inaugural Wish, we performed a show um, entitled All the Difference. It was also an original student written piece, but was interactive. It had an audience of 20 and all 20 people um, were given basically a, a phone with an app on it that allowed them to vote on the outcome of the play. So imagine like Black Mirror's Bandersnatch episode, but as live theater, which means that our entire company was prepared to deal with a show that I think could run 34 possible ways. Um, so really phenomenal um, hyper-creative theater experience. And I think one of the hallmarks of our company Oh, Alan, you muted yourself. yourself. Alan, you muted yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> Alan, how could you? The hallmarks of Rams of, of doing uh, theater work that's really sort of exciting and innovative and pushes the envelope of what can be done with performance. And then finally, our third core show offering um, is Spring Show. Uh, the Spring Musical, it's the massive um, spring musical, was going to be Pippin this year, um, uh, but a phenomenal experience um, for sort of the big. Uh, smash Broadway style musical experience on campus. Um, it's a really exciting organization. I think some of the things that I have found most valuable, I'm a techie. I started as um, an assistant lighting designer on Gaiety's my freshman fall. Um, some other things happened and then I ended up as the executive producer. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's a really phenomenal um, place to learn and grow your skills alongside people who really love this artwork, to find a phenomenal community, and to put on work that we're really, really proud of. Um, so I think that's uh, one of the really exciting things. Of late, sort of, the organization has uh, come to reckon with some of the challenges that are inherent to producing large-scale, what would traditionally be considered like commercial-style Broadway theater in a way that's reflective of sort of the principles of diversity, inclusion, and equity that are really important in this day and age and making sure that the stories we're putting on stage are reflective of the stories that the world needs to hear. Um, that's, that's a tension we're actively working with um, and something that I think is, is an important consideration for any and all theater makers to have um, in their work. I found this company is super um, fantastic in that it has a space for everyone. If you're interested in non-musical performance, we have Wish. There are many roles in Gaiety's and Spring Show that don't require any singing at all. If you're a killer dancer, we have dance ensembles, it typically in our Spring Shows, that offer phenomenal dance opportunities on stage. If you're really interested in obviously singing, we got loads of opportunities for singers, um, singers, actors, dancers. Uh, the technician community is really strong um, because we're performing on so many uh, varied stages. Um, we can 
produce some really exciting design uh, and tech work and our organization is set up in such a way, and many organizations are like this, it's just as a function of scale. Um, we tend to have lots of assistant designers as well. That gives a very clear opportunity to nurture your skills and your interests. If you want to try a design field you've never done before or go into something and sort of build up those skills and opportunities with the intention of doing it at a really high level later, um, that's a really exciting opportunity that um, I find Rams is really fantastic at. Uh, and then there are also lots of things that are not necessarily related to the show. I've actually fallen in love with how to do make theater organizations run better. That's why I do what I do. That's sort of what got me interested in, in studying and pursuing the master's degree that I'm doing and hopefully my eventual career um, of sort of informing how do you how do you connect with people and get them to come to your shows in a meaningful way? How do you build community? in a show in really meaningful ways? How do you manage the resources that you have as a theater organization in increasingly clever ways? How do you even, how to have democratic processes like we all do to allow a company to stay informed and have a voice in what their organization is doing? I think there are some really fantastic opportunities to engage um, in sort of the, the theater organization that are not strictly related to performance. Uh, and those, if you're interested in those or know people who are really interested in those, I think, the Stanford theater community, the student theater community at large, because of the incredible autonomy we have, um, every decision we make is done by students. There's pretty much no staff oversight for better or for worse. Um, and the opportunities to dive in as a leader, an artist, and as like a full human being, I think are really phenomenal um, in the Stanford theater ecosystem as a whole. Can I also just add about Ram's Head um, as like also a designer person? So this is, I think we are the only student group in my time here, including the theater department, um, to perform in Memorial Auditorium, which is the like big 1700 seat proscenium theater. And so that's where we do gaieties and our spring show. And then Wish, like Alan mentioned, is kind of dependent year to year. And that could be like in a tiny black box theater or in the middle of nowhere in a forest, um, kind of depending on what the show the show asks for. But I think as far as like I lighting designed gaieties my sophomore year, and that was super exciting to like get to bring in moving light rentals and like use all of the different like line sets and stuff like that. There's like full fly systems. One of the theaters has an automated fly system, which is a new fun toy that like we haven't really gotten to play with too much because there's only been like two shows in there so far. Um, but I think as far as like technology for designers, Ram's Head is, has a really great mentorship structure to kind of allow you to like work up to that. Do we have anybody from Theater Lab that wants to talk about it? So Theater Lab is basically Stanford's uh, kind of experimental theater group on campus that we like to say is, is essentially kind of passion project oriented. So like we are all about providing resources and support for people who like have a really strong passion, interest in putting on a show, something they want to direct, something they want to perform in. Um, we, and we have people pitch shows and then like we fill out a season of like three to four shows a year. Uh, we were going to have four this year, I suppose, or maybe five before before uh, everything happened. Um, so, so yeah, so it's very much kind of, it, it is a group where if you, even if you perhaps have like an original work or if you have like a play you just always wanted to do, um, you might like assemble a small team of people you want to do it with, pitch it to lab at the end of the year, and then... Um, based on how things shake out, um, if you're able to be on the season, then like, like theater lab board will kind of help you um, in certain ways um, put that on. But I will say that I think a key element to it is that theater lab board definitely has less oversight um, in what you're doing on those um, different projects than like a group, like Rams had maybe, um, in the sense that it's definitely one where you have a lot of flexibility uh, in what you can do. And also you are probably doing a lot of problem solving associated with the fact that you're like, really getting this thing up on its feet um, yourselves, uh, obviously like together uh, and, and with the lab community and like board members pitching and help, you know, but so it's definitely kind of like, like get her done, like, like all hands on deck, um, people kind of fulfilling 
the passions that they want to do. Yeah, Anthony asked, uh, I guess Caitlin already responded to, uh, but for instance, like Theater Lab, the only, the way that you're a member, like how you become a member is if you are involved in a Theater Lab show in any way. Like if you just do a show once or if you work on a show, like you're a member of Theater Lab. So it's very, it's very flexible. Like anyone can join um, and then you're, you're, in the crew. Theater Lab is great for experimental stuff, um, especially things in unusual uh, locations. Theater Lab is performed uh, in a, next to a basketball court, outside of a dorm, in a locker room, and in a bathroom in the past three years. So there's a lot of really cool, interesting opportunities to like pursue passion projects and do things that other theater spaces like uh, wouldn't otherwise be able to, to work with. Do we have any members of Latinx in theater? That want to talk about it? I mean, I'm. I wouldn't really say I'm a part of the organization. I was in a, a production of In the Heights with them last year. It's definitely a. a it's a, like last year was the, the basically it's a, inaugural year. It's not has not been around. It's not very well ingrained as of yet. Um, but they do some really really cool productions this year. Uh, they uh, were going to be doing a production of Sweeney Todd um, inside of the um, bookstore. On campus, which was going to be really, really cool. Unfortunately, um, I had to had to shut down. Um, but yeah, obviously, like most of the other um, groups, like ATP or Black Stage, they they do a lot of work focusing on the issues specific to uh, the Latinx community. Um, obviously, In the Heights, um, for example, is is a show directly about that. But like, they were adapting um, uh, Sweeney Todd to have a lot of emphasis on. Um, like certain characters and, and how um, like portraying certain characters as people of color directly, and how that shapes um, the story and how um, modern issues like like ICE and detention centers, how that can play into this um, this kind of story. And so they do some really, really amazing stuff with that. Yeah, and finally, Liam, do you wanna talk about Stanford Drag Troop? Yeah, so uh, Stanford Drag Troop is another one of the younger organizations on campus. It's, I think we just had our third year. And essentially Stanford Drag Troop is a place, um, so a lot of people know know of drag through Paul's Drag Race, um, kind of like hyper femme, like one style drag. Uh, but what we, what we really are is we're a place where performers can kind of uh, leverage a community to discover kind of very open-ended theater uh, based on some way wanting to play with gender expression. It's not just, or not even mostly, drag queens, drag queens, drag kings, drag monsters, drag royalty, whatever you want. What's really amazing about the organization for me is that we usually have a theme for our shows, but it's very open-ended. We try and choose a theme that is very non-specific. That way you can still adapt your own style of, of, of drag to it. For example, our last show was Disney themed or drag plus. Um, and we had every, everything from someone doing a Maleficent inspired uh, like death metal number to uh, me doing like a Little Mermaid number. Like you can really go whatever direction you want. Um, it's been a really wonderful community for me because it's a space um, that is on the one hand, uh, dedicated to talking about uh, kind of queer art and queering art, but it's also, it, it doesn't feel it, that doesn't make it feel like a purely academic space. It's also just a really fun, wacky place where anyone can experience really anything. Um, one thing that is really exciting is that in this next year, we're thinking about kind of moving to a slightly more traditional theater structure of in the past, we haven't really had stage managers or directors or whatever. It's just been very free form. Um, but in an effort to uh, make things run more smoothly, we're looking into having a producer and a stage manager for every show, et cetera, so that, um, and kind of to answer the question that someone had brought up about doing multiple theater groups, this is an example of where stuff that I've learned from Ram's Head, I'm now able to come and apply to uh, Stanford Drag Troupe because I learned, hey, no one's calling all the cues in Drag Troupe's performance. Maybe we should have a stage manager. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's a great place to experience gender, dance, even if you just want to come choreograph something, sew someone in a costume, whatever you want. We have plenty of sequins. I saw somebody in their introduction, I forget who mentioned being an, interested in sketch comedy. Um, and I just want to throw out like Robert Barons real quick. I don't think oh, yeah. if any of us are members. I'm definitely not, but they are like, they are a sketch comedy troupe on campus that has really great shows that I've seen and enjoyed greatly. And there's also the Stanford I've, Improvisers. Yeah. I've heard Robert Barons describe as like the SNL of like Stanford. It's just a lot of like really just a random, funny, chaotic skits 
um, that they put on in some like lecture hall. Um, I really enjoy going to their shows. I'm not a member. If you're interested, I, I in kind of have a question about them. I don't know if anyone can answer this, but that was me who mentioned that. Um, and like, do you know um, if it's student written sketch comedy? Um, yes. Okay. Cool. And is that like the same thing as everything else where you just like, you're in a show and then you're a member of the group? Did they have an audition? Yeah. Uh, you auditioned for Robert Barron's as an organization, I believe. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yeah, they, they do have some long form improv though, I think, in, like through their classes and in their practice. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in my experience doing improv outside of Stanford and then doing it here, um, there's more of an emphasis on short form, but they have a creative director for every show that Sims do has done. So one time they did a Shakespeare theme for the quarter, one time they did a musical improv. So it's definitely focused around short form and short form games, uh, at least in the curriculum. And then you kind of expand more to long form and short form for the shows that they do. Also, um, speaking of really good TAPS faculty, like our improv faculty are so amazing. Um, and the classes that they offer, like, People that don't do any other theater on campus will take TAPS 103, which is the intro to improv class. So I think improv is an area that we're very strong in. Um, we just want to like open the floor up to like anybody who has questions now. Somebody had a question. Oh, Anthony's wondering about the venues where Venue. performances are performed. Yeah, so I can talk about the spaces that TAPS has. And then some of a lot of those overlap with other student theater groups using TAP spaces, um, and then maybe somebody else can talk about like the more non-traditional spaces. So there is, and this is all on taps.stanford.edu, but there is a 1700 seat proscenium theater called Memorial Auditorium, which is huge and gigantic and really is only used for like NSO, which is the new student orientation. And then um, Ram's Head also does some shows in there. And then there's Piggott Theater, which is about 197 seats, I think, and that's also a proscenium theater. That's the one with the fancy new technology of automated line sets, which is really cool for like tech people. And then upstairs, there is a black box theater called Prosser that is mostly used as a classroom space, but some people do shows up there. We had our winter show up there. I think that's around like 100 seats. And then the Nidery is where a lot of student theater groups do shows. Um, that is also a black box, I think probably about like 150. And then the other big top space is Robley Studio Theater, which the department like loves. Um, and they do at least one or two shows in there every year. It's really new. It opened in 2016, I think. It like is and isn't a black box. It has convertible seating with these seating risers. So it can be anywhere from like, I think our last show had an audience of 80, um, all the way up to like almost 200, I think. And that has like a grid system up above. And the department does a lot of work in there. But I know Latinx is uh, in the Heights was there last year. And I'm not sure if any other student group has performed there yet. But I think we're that will slowly start to become like a new student theater performance space too. Uh, Skylar asked, how is it balancing theater schoolwork and social life slash what is the level of commitment that comes with being in one of these organizations? Uh, I can speak to that a little bit. I, I will say sometimes you feel yourself making the trade-off, at least for me, I'll just speak in my perspective. I found myself making the trade-off that um, my theater life becomes my social life, um, which is definitely very, uh, it, it, there's good opportunities for that. Caitlin was our community manager. Uh, Caitlin and Eve were our community managers for PIP, and they did a really good job. But for every RAM show, at least, and I think this is the same for a lot of other theater organizations, there's usually a community manager who's, or two whose job it is to kind of make sure that you're not just, that should you want to, you're not just showing up and leaving. You're doing, you're really becoming, you're meeting your best friends. In the case of Eve's parents, your spouses, um, through theater. Uh, actually, and same with my friend's parents, too. So they were another gaydies couple. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it definitely is something where you have to balance it, though. Um, a lot of the time, you will look at your quarter and say, like, because I knew I would be technical directing Pippin, I took less classes. Um, but on the flip side, what's so wonderful is that it's – from the mo if you join as a freshman or whenever you join, but especially valuable as a freshman, you're all of a sudden connected to a bunch of upperclassmen who can tell you, hey, uh, ME 103 is way more work than you expect, or take this class, it's not much work, and it'll help you kind of balance that all. Um, yeah, I, I'm still finishing out my first year, and I can definitely say that theater colored my entire freshman experience because I did a show every quarter. Um, I'm working on my fourth show right now, 
babies. Um, that's how crazy you can get in a year. Um, but I definitely felt like a lot of my, like Liam said, a lot of my social life was just through theater. Gaties, I was only friends with Gaties people. Um, and then in the winter, I assistant directed the TAPS department play. Um, and that had rehearsals every night. So that combined with, I was also assistant choreographing Pippin. I had rehearsals six out of seven days of the week. So it was really hard to um, like balance out, like making friends <laughs> that weren't theater um, involved. But I think that the community that I built just by being so spread out through all these organizations um, really just established a good social community that I could fall back on, um, even if it wasn't like in my freshman dorm. Yeah, I think so. I I also I did five shows my freshman year, and that was just a choice I made for myself. But I think from what I've seen and kind of being on the other side of it, we definitely have people that come into the casting room that are like. I'm taking a really heavy quarter. I only want like an ensemble part or I want a part where I'm not called all the time or maybe just a few days a week. And like, that is something that is super doable. Um, I think most of us here have probably made the choice consciously to like do this number of shows that is going to take up so much space in our social life. But that is because like, I don't know. I, I also did Gaty's freshman year. And like, so I found all of my friends there and I was like, why ruin a good thing? Um, but I think in terms of like, if you know that you're going to be really committed to CS and want to do like other student groups that aren't theater related, there's totally space for, for that. And just like, know that you can have the commitment level that you want to it. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that takes over your social or academic life. Yeah. I just want to add to that. I, um, before this past year, I was like sort of tangentially a part of rams and that like i was in the pit and i met some cool people through that but i wasn't like i didn't like it wasn't my primary community um i'm actually in the same acapella group well was in the same acapella group as morgan i don't know it's fine um as morgan uh and that was like my space um and i still have a ton of friends in that group and this year having i was the vocal director for pippin um and it definitely was like a huge time commitment that like i don't regret for a second it was so fulfilling in so many ways um and i feel like i really built a new community for myself my junior year by the way um which i was not expecting but i also felt like i found ways to balance for myself being immersing myself in this new rams community which i love but then also maintaining like my friends in my acapella group and friends that I made through CS and everything. So it's like totally doable. Um, and it's just a matter of like what you put in and how much you want to buy into it. Yeah. Oh, um, also oh go, go ahead. Queen. About it. Um, yeah. So I am, um, my closest group of friends aren't like theater people. Um, for me, I find it easier to like kind of, not have to think about theater all the time um i'm also doing like very um like a very heavy academic course load and so my experience with it is that like emily said you kind of get to choose how much um theater you want to be part you want to be a part of your life um besides a lot of uh, a lot of shows and a lot of organizations have pretty intensive kind of like buy-in um spirit but if you are looking for kind of like a smaller part or um, smaller time commitment, there are also spaces for you to kind of like test out and see if you want to be part of the community. Um, there are also a lot of people, for example, Shakes has a policy of you only need to be in one show um, per year um, to be a member. So a lot of our members are CS majors, ms &E majors who take very heavy quarters and they can't be in a show and we totally understand that um so i think i mean personally for me i think stanford is great in the sense that it kind of allows um people with with a variety of um i guess like time they want to dedicate to theater to be a part of the community uh, i just want to say on the note of like academics um if you do student theater through a student organization like rams had atb latinx and theater um, you don't get units for that that count towards your total unit count um, unless you do it 
through the TAPS department and register for 122B. Or TAPS 140. <laughs> that got canceled for me this quarter. I'm still so mad about oh, that. No. Anyway, okay. yeah. You're if you're eight. producing or directing. Or, no, if you do any design role or assistant design role, you can really, the description. I got it for vocal directing. <laughs> yeah, the description says, like, producing, directing, or stage managing, but it's literally any technical role. You can get, like, four units for it. And I probably could have done it as FO. <laughs> Yeah, there's no extra work associated with it. It's just like a space to go and talk about the show that you're working on. We call it theater therapy. It's amazing. And you definitely mm -hmm. can get units for it. Mm -hmm. They're credit, no credit. But TAPS 140 this quarter. So while we're talking about nuts and bolts tap stuff to answer Emily's question, underclassmen are totally welcome, able to get into any classes that they want to take in the department. There isn't like a, oh, like only seniors get into this class or anything like that. Um, and really the only thing that you have to like audition for or apply for is if you are like auditioning for a show that has a class associated with it. Um, or like, you know, so many people want to be in TAPS 103 that like you have to like register, maybe on the wait list. If not, show up and say you're, you know, if you're interested in majoring, especially you kind of talk or you talk about why you want to take the class. Um, but those are like very special circumstances. And then like how people get in is kind of. Uh, I, I'm not so necessarily sure like all the details and like how the, those things are chosen, but that's like a very small amount of classes. Most of the classes you just sign up and you show up. And actually for TAPS 103, which is the super, super hard to get an improv class. If you've done improv in high school, uh, you can send Dan an email and he let, it's a new, he started doing this last year. He lets you skip to TAPS 104, which never has a wait list. So uh, yeah, me and a few other uh, a few other freshmen did that our freshmen like we literally as freshmen fall were able to get into the improv class just if you, I know a lot a few of you mentioned having improv experience so if you've done a decent amount of improv before uh, write Dan Klein he's literally the one of the friendliest guys um, and just say hey uh, I was reading about blah 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 I'd be really interested in doing improv do you think I could come to 104 um, and you have a good shot. Um, Skaya asked what has your favorite TAPS classes been? I mean 103 is just so fun like in, in uh, beginning improv it's just because like there's 30 people in that class there's maybe like two or three people associated with theater and everyone else is just from all over campus you just get like this random collection of people just showing up every single day having a good time um I took it winter quarter last year and it's like the class that got me through that quarter because I was also taking like CS 106a which is my was which is my first ever computer science class and like a bunch of other difficult stuff so it's like it's a, a really fun really stress relieving class so one of my favorite classes it's not technically a taps class um but it's very theater involved um it's sophomore college and it's technically under the english department um brenna was in it with me um it's, and alan did it as well as a ta um anyway super fun class where you it's called what is it learning theater something from audience to critic at the oregon shakespeare festival um and so Basically your class of like 12 students goes up to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival for two weeks before the start of your sophomore year. Um, and you spend those two weeks going and seeing all of the 11 shows that are in rep um, and talking to actors, directors, creators about their work like during the day before you go see the performance or afterwards and getting to ask them about their lives. Um, and it's just, I think one of the best classes I've ever taken because it's like theater all the time. You get really close with the people that you're there with. You're all staying in the same hostel and we stayed up so late just having discussions about the theater we saw. So that was definitely, I think my favorite theatrical class. Mine was probably intro to technical theater. Um, I took it like fall quarter freshman year. I took only tops classes, which is not something a lot of people do. Um, and it was taught by our old technical director who actually left, but the class is still going on. And he just went through like every different field in technical theater. So things like lighting and sound, um, and set to like, not even set design, but like set construction and scenic painting and like brought in the scenic painter for Berkeley rep. And she did a weekend long workshop with us. And it was just so, I think it was like the perfect introduction class for my like degree in technical theater that I was really just like exposed to so many different things that I have never done but like definitely needed to know how to do to like pursue technical theater professionally which is something I'm hoping to do um and then also like a good 
reinforcer of a lot of the skills that I learned in high school, but like didn't totally feel like I was super solid in or like that it was the right way or like the professional way to do things. Um, so it was just like a super reassuring class and very like a very nice way to start my freshman experience. Mary Tyler asked, do you have to be super dedicated to be involved in tech or do you have flexibility to explore other paths? It's so flexible. Oh my goodness. So the great thing about techies at Stanford is that one, um, there aren't enough of us to service every show that's in need. So if you want to do something, you can almost always find a way to do it. Um, the second thing is because there's not a rehearsal process so much, um, you can end up actually doing typically more shows a year than an actor can because you can do your design work, sort of go to the production meetings, help out at build, and then sort of show up. This is actually a really important difference. I don't know if this is necessarily your high school experiences, but at least for me, it was sort of the, like the actors are going to rehearse after school and then the, all of the technicians are going to go and like build the set and hang the lights and do all the prep and that stuff. Um, that's typically not how it works um, for Stanford student theater. Uh, instead, it's more the rehearsal process goes and then technicians are doing and designers are doing a lot of that prep work. Um, and everyone builds together typically on the weekends, but it's not like every weekend, you know, it's like a certain amount of time that you have to go. Um, and then you um, put things up during tech week. So for technicians, it's a super intensive tech week and show week process. But before then, it's, there's not a lot of hardcore scheduled time. So when you talk to actors, like actors will be doing like two to three shows a year at most, and techies can do up to like six. Um, and some people do both. I mean, I, I have, there have been quarters where I have done both tech and performance, sometimes in different groups. So your ability to mix and match those experiences is really huge. And the, honestly, the only limitation um, is sort of how you manage your time and conflicts. Uh, and if those things align and you have sort of the time and energy to put in and be in the places you need to be to, uh, to be a good member of those teams, like you can pretty much do whatever you want. There's also like super strong. So if you want to do like sound design, but you've never heard a sound ever, um, like <laughs> there's such strong mentorship structures in place that you can like start as in, like an assistant sound designer and have a really low commitment, but still like a lot of exposure to the types of things that are happening. Rams had has super strong mentorship structure in terms of like assistant to associate to like head designer. Um, I know Star and Inc. you mentioned like ATP also has really great design work. Shakes has good, like a lot of mentorship um, from former like people who have done that job. And so not only is there like room to do your own thing in terms of like you, your specialty, but like also learning new things and trying new things in a lower lower commitment way. Uh, I will also say that um, for tech and theater, just like with a lot of stuff in theater, but I think it's especially true for tech, there's a low, bar to, low barrier to entry, but a high level of performance where like, just because uh, you might, you might have the perception that just because it's open to newer people means that like, it's going to be like good, but you know, maybe not perfect. No, no, it's super high quality, but because there's such great mentorship, anyone can do it. I think it's really telling that two of the three Rams technical directors this year had not intended to do theater tech um, and then kind of fell in love with it uh, because they went to build hours. Um, and then the other one is just a pro, but like, like for me and the technical director for Gaties, we had both, uh, come into doing theater tech, having intended to only do performance. And then all of a sudden we went to build hours and we're like, wait, this is really fun. And now I can't stop doing tech. So it's really wonderful. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, Anthony asked what the timeline for theater productions are like and how often are rehearsals? So shows are typically allocated by like the quarter. Um, like from my experience at like Graham's Head, um, Gaties, that was entirely during fall quarter. We had about nine weeks to put it together because it had to go up before big game. Um, while for shows like Pippin, which was the Ramshead Spring Show, um, it was called the Spring Show, but you rehearsed during the entirety of winter play. Um, same with um, Taps has their winter play that they did this year. That was also just during winter quarter and quarters, right, quarters are 10 weeks long. So you should expect the shows to be um, 
like a little less than that so like it can range well for the big shows it's like nine weeks i know that the aatp new works festival wasn't that like a like a shorter process um i think that was a i think that's like just a little bit different of a rehearsal process just in general um but it was actually around nine weeks i would say um because part of it was like workshopping plays as well Oh, also, I was just looking at my Google Calendar, seeing what my gaiety schedule was like. Um, so we had rehearsals pretty much like almost every day from 7 to 10, roughly, but sometimes you weren't called for certain days. And then we would have rehearsals on Sundays from 1 to 5. Yeah, 1 to 5. That's a very typical rehearsal schedule. Typically, you rehearse a show for six to eight weeks prior to it happening. It's usually all contained to one quarter, Ram's Head's shows being the major exception to this. Um, and typically, it's what it's a Monday through Thursday and then Sunday rehearsal. Um, but also, if you're involved on the technical side of things, um, or if you're like directing a show, I feel like the timeline can be a lot longer because shows for theater groups are usually chosen um in the spring before the school year um so i know when i was directing my show for the next spring i actually like started thinking about it um and reaching out to people to be uh on the company um the spring before so a year before like i know for me uh i ended up working on gaiety's last year for 10 months um but that's because i ended up taking a creative and a technical role um our but... whole lives our whole lives Get ready, lives. Chloe. You haven't even done one fifth of the time yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but but the, but it's all super rewarding, and it's all very very clearly communicated. You're not gonna sign up for something it, like and then do a lot more work than you expected. Probably not. Um, at least you can talk like, like you might not understand how much work technical directing is. This isn't me talking about myself. But there's so many people you could t like. For example, going into me technical directing Pippin, I was able to talk to Alan and Caitlin and be like, hey, how much work is this? And I had a very clear expectation. So you probably, if you do your homework, which you guys are doing right now, you won't be surprised by the amount of work you do. And it's all really rewarding. I saw that somebody asked in the chat about audition processes and you guys answered already, but I also wanted to tag onto that um, on how you find out about auditions. There's no one main like billboard where all the auditions are like advertised, um, but Stanford is, they have like a lot of email lists that you can sign up for these individual organization email lists uh, at the start of the year. Um, we'll see how fall quarter goes. Um, but that's where they send out emails about shows that are coming up. Um, they'll also forward emails from other organizations. It's all like cross communication. Uh, are there any more questions? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, a lot tabling, of tabling too. There'll, people, there'll be people like, do you like to sing? Join acapella. You'll get that like your entire first week. No matter who you are, you will be yelled at about gaieties until you're very, very frightened and you audition and you don't know what you're getting into. And two years later, you're sitting on a panel about theater at Stanford. And then they force like, you to yell at people. And it's a whole chain. Um, I was also, so I answered Glenn's question in the chat very briefly, um, basically just saying yes, like there are ways to intern work at like other professional theaters. And just to give you some things that you can like look up on your own time if you're interested, um, one program that a lot of students take advantage of is Stanford Arts' uh, like Stanford's internships in, it's like internships in arts administration. Like, so if you search like Stanford Arts, arts administration internships, if you just search those words, um, you'll get to the website. But basically it is a program where there are professional theaters um, in the Bay Area, LA, and New York, um, who partner with Stanford Arts to say like, yes, this summer we want to have like hire an intern for, for these, um, for, like to do this role. And then you apply like through Stanford Arts to that position. And if you get it, you get a stipend um, to basically fund you doing that. So, and there are kind of, there are internships in arts education, which is kind of the field that I'm interested in, in, in uh, literary departments, in, um, in community engagement, uh, film, um, all sorts of things. So definitely look to that website. Um, and then there's also a program um, called Stanford New York, uh, which I did my junior fall, um, that is a fake study abroad program where you, you're in New York for a quarter taking classes um, in the evening, but the, the main part of your experience is a experiential learning 
through an internship that you do during the day. And the fall quarter is the arts themed quarter. And so um, if you're in that program, you have an internship coordinator who works with you to place you with an organization. Um, and that is kind of, it's kind of a practical hands-on learning experience. And then like after that quarter, you'd like come away with like a three month like job and experience for your resume, so. Um, regarding internships, I just wanted to add that it's totally possible to be able to get an internship or, like in the arts generally or in theater specifically um, without having had a lot of experience like before college. Um, I was able to get an internship last summer working at American Conservatory Theater, which I mentioned before. Um, and I, I never did theater before coming to college. And I think um, a big part of why I was able to get that internship and also like be familiar with that kind of environment once I was there um, was because I was uh, heavily involved in like Stanford theater before applying. Um, and this also reminds me of something Alan was saying where like, uh, it's kind of, um, this is a kind of environment because it's so, I don't know, it's really like student made, self made. Um, and I think like you both learn a lot about performance if you're interested in that or like technical things if you're interested in that, but also you learn a lot about uh, being a part of the administrative world in theater, um, which is what a lot of these internships um, are about. So I think, yeah, I just want to encourage people who I feel like I had a lot of imposter syndrome before like going into that um, internship and I feel like it's totally possible for you to do um, no matter what skill level you feel like you have. Oh, Gwen asked, what are your future plans and are you planning to have a career in the theater industry? Yeah, I guess like as someone who is seriously thinking about doing theater things for a year or two um, before thinking about going back to school, um, but majoring in something that is not really affiliated with theater, computer science, I think for me, um, I'm really interested in going into education or admin and working with kids for a couple of years. Um, and I think that so much of the experience, like Anki said, um, of working in Stanford theater is what gave me a lot of the skills to talk about theater in, a, in the way that the industry talks about it. I think the microcosms of Stanford theater prepares you very well for the discussions around race, representation, um just like what how do you build community with theater that question that alan posed um those microcosms prepare you really well for those discussions and i think there's like so many opportunities most people think about theater and it's automatically equated with acting which like if you're interested in that totally encourage it but yeah being at stanford has also taught me there's so many other opportunities um of being involved with theater one being the administration side so like being a tech being in the technical side too, wanting to design um technical direct those are all like super va valuable things you can pursue after graduating and i think that overall stanford does a really good job of preparing you for those roles so yeah i am also hoping to pursue theater professionally after school in the technical realm um so right now my current plan is to do a year-long fellowship after i graduate which is kind of just like an extended internship program where you don't really get paid but they also provide housing and hopefully like a small stipend of some sort um so it's kind of like you gain a lot of experience while not really suffering any financial loss which is great if you're in a position to do that and then i'm gonna obviously like apply for jobs, um, hopefully within production management or stage management. Yeah, so I am um, pursuing theater um, after college. Um, I came into Stanford, like having like made the decision of like, do I go to conservatory for acting or do I go to Stanford? And so I feel like when I, sh when I showed up, I kind of had this question of like, because I'm not choosing conservatory, like am I like giving up on acting somehow? Like, like, what does it mean to, like, study acting here, but also, like, want to learn about the world to, like, better inform the kind of art that I wanted to make, and so I definitely, like, dove into getting acting experience at Stanford to kind of, like, feed that part of myself, like, wanted that from college, but I also had the opportunity, like, so many of us here to, like, try so many new roles that I hadn't tried before, like, stage management, I work in front of house, I also work in the costume shop, um, I've vocal directed, I directed Gaties this past year, and I'd never directed anything before. Um, and it was such a huge, amazing learning experience. 
Um, and that like has made me really excited about like maybe wanting to do that in the future. Um, I think I mentioned that I've, I'm interested in arts education. That's what I was working in when I was in New York. And then I also have produced uh, Stanford Repertory Theater the last couple summers. And so my experience in producing has like informed a lot about like, okay, like how do I want to like go about this whole like working in theater thing. But yeah, I'm also applying to like fellowships um, and apprenticeships in arts education. Um, as kind of a next step um, and then I'm going to kind of assess like do I want to pursue teaching artistry do I want to pursue like going back to school like an MFA or or another like um, education position in the theater so I think I also I um, am probably not doing theater as a career honestly who knows I'm really interested in, in helping organizations work better particularly nonprofits. Um, and the nonprofits that I'm actually like used to working with and helping to work better are theater. So like, who knows if I'll end up there? So that's a, that's a big question, at least for me. I think the one thing I wanted to throw into this conversation is I was also in a similar position of debating doing a conservatory program versus Stanford, but for tech. Um, I chose Stanford and I am 100% a worse designer because of that choice. I would have been a far better lighting or sound designer going to a conservatory program. On the other hand, I think I'm a much better person and I think I'm a much more well-rounded and productive member of the theater making process having gone to Stanford. Um, because you get to combine both like really formative theater experiences um, in the department with classes plus academic things outside um, in, in any of Stanford's other academic departments plus the, the culture of innovation and sort of like cross um, field thinking that's just in the air at the Stanford community, plus the applications sort of experiential learning you can get in and, and leadership experience you can get in the student theater realm, I think allows you to be a person who can participate in the theater process in really innovative ways. I considered like theater admin, I considered doing like someone's got to build all those lights, like I, I, I'm kind of an electrical engineer. Um, and those things, I think, especially honestly living in a time right now where traditional like in-person large seat theater literally cannot happen. Um, I think this is a phenomenal experience to prepare yourself to either carve a really specific niche in theater that combines interests of your choosing or gives you sort of a cross-functional understanding of the theater world that will allow us to participate and make the theater of tomorrow, even though the NYU, Carnegie Mellon, Michigan, DePaul's of the world may be producing better specialists today. I was also debating between a conservatory style program and Stanford. And I'll admit, I cried when I hit the rejection button um, on that conservatory style, but I do not regret one second of not being there because if I went and only studied acting, um, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to produce. I wouldn't have choreographed. I wouldn't have directed. And even though I'm not actively acting in every single moment, I'm like, oh, wow, I miss acting. It, I know that by exploring these other processes, like it will make me such a better artist um, because I will have such a wider mentality about what it takes to make a show rather than just being there and showing up for rehearsals. I cannot imagine a better environment for someone who is not a theater major to do theater. Not only because it's accessible. I know there's a lot of schools where you're either in theater or you're not. Um, and it, you only have a small group of people who can kind of do the shows here. That's not the case both in Task Productions and there's so many different theater groups. I mean, we have 10 acapella groups on campus. That's how much the arts is just integrated in is integrated into kind of the culture here um, and it's even more dance groups and even more theater groups. Um, it also means that you have a lot of kind of cross fertilization of ideas when it comes like I'm able to use a lot of the stuff that I learned through my engineering curriculum in the way we build sets. Um, you know, I think Dylan was doing some really cool stuff that I, I assume she's learning through CS and other stuff in programming our video wall for Pippin. Like, there's a lot of, okay, maybe not. Maybe she's just, she's born with it. But like, um, th there's a, a lot of like, both literally learning what you learn in other classes and bring it to student theater, but also just the spirit that people bring is because not everyone's there to create the same idea of theater. You end up with so many different kinds, so many different perspectives, and also a very large network of theater people because you have the ones that are doing six shows a year. You have people like me who are maybe doing three and you have people who have done one show but are still in love with it. And so you end up with this wide network of like 200, 300 people, to be honest, that you can learn from and gain friends and networking opportunities. It's so, I love it. It's great. I actually changed my answer, Liam. Um, 
my work with Pippin didn't really have to do with stuff that I was learning about in CS and computer science, but it did have a lot to do with what I was learning about in my art classes because cool. I was working, yeah, I was working on more like experimental media and performance spaces. So that, that tied into it for sure. I wanted to add another perspective about pursuing theater as a career or anything in the arts as a career after college, which is that um, I feel like that is a privileged thing to be able to do um, in the world we live in today. And I'm someone who is very interested in like either directing for theater or for film in the future, but also uh, my parents are not super supportive of that at all and also not super supportive of my major. Um, but I guess I just say that to say that if these are the things you're passionate about and you love, like there are other people who also share that struggle if if you are also like having these kinds of conversations with your parents or your friends about like what kind of career you want to pursue in the future and also i think there are so many re uh, resources at stanford stanford is like a really rich university obviously um to like help move you towards those paths that's something that f you can feel free to like reach out to me about or to other people that you know who are going through the same thing um because that is like a very real concern to have I think regardless of whatever way you want to get involved in theater on campus, um, the best way to do it is to just jump head first. You're going to find a lot of people tabling at the beginning of the school year. Um, a lot of theater groups will be represented at the activities fair where they can take your emails then. Um, and then you'll be signed up for those mailing lists so you can find out about um, auditions and tech opportunities. Um, I kind of use this time to uh, advertise my own show. <laughs> Um, you've heard the word Gaties mentioned multiple, like many times uh, within the past hour and a half. I'm the producer for Gaties for next year, and I, Gaties was my introduction to theater on campus my freshman year, this year, um, and it was the best decision that I ever made. Um, it was really the way that I got to meet people from all different theater organizations because a bunch of people just congregated to work on Gaities. Um, it's the biggest tradition that Stanford has, um, biggest turnout in Memod. Um, it, is completely student ridden, um, completely comical. And I really think that it's just a really great way for freshmen to be involved in theater. Um, auditions happen like literally like the first week of school. Um, if you really, if you're really excited to get involved. Um, so I just want to plant the idea in you guys' mind, um, just as one of the many, many options for you to start your path. In the arts yeah. I was also yeah I was also gonna say I think I don't know if other student theater groups have their seasons planned yet like somebody mentioned earlier that usually happens during spring quarter which we've just started I don't know I'm sure you guys will definitely hear about shows happening every theater group typically does around one show a quarter um, although that varies and some do like two a year but yeah just keep your eye out Gaties is definitely one option I did it I loved it I think there's a lot of different opportunities kind of depending on what you're looking for and Gaties is very informal um it doesn't like you can come in with absolutely no experience or you can be like the best belter in the world I just wanted to ask because since I'm interested in doing acapella and um theater possibly um haven't had any experience um like like how did you experience the time management like with both of those activities and is it like hard to be involved in both? Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm in an acapella group on campus as well as very involved in theater. Um, last year, I was in a group the entire year and then also was in a musical every single quarter, um, which was intense and it's definitely a lot of work. Um, definitely was my limit, um, especially in, in a couple of the quarters when I was taking um, more units. Um, but it's definitely possible. A lot of people do it. Um, a lot of people, um, uh, like in shows, like there's always like one or two people from all the acapella groups, at least the shows that I've been in. Um, so you kind of get this congregation of that, which is pretty fun. Um, and it can be difficult to balance rehearsals because usually, like if you're if you're acting in a show, for for example, it's you know 20, 15 to twenty hours of rehearsal every single week, plus like eight to ten hours of acapella rehearsal every week. So it's like there's a lot of stuff happening and you basically don't have any evening time. Um, but I think a lot of people do do it. Um, and I, I personally felt like it was, it was manageable and it was, it was really enjoyable to have two communities um, that you're really close with at the same time. Great, thank you so much. On that note, thank you so much for coming out today.
I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your interest in the arts at Stanford. We're always looking to expand the scene. Um, I really look forward to meeting all of you next year. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves. Smash that like button. Yes, that's, do it. Um, have a fantastic day or morning, wherever you are. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks you. So much. I love you.